The California Collaborative for Public Health Research came together um, from the pandemic, kind of a silver lining in a way, of uh, shared recognition that we needed to do more to address health disparities in our community before disproportionate impacts of COVID-19 um, made those disparities even worse. And so in trying to be thoughtful about that approach, we were able to convene public health policymakers, academic scientists and other scholars, as well as community-based organizations to collectively address this problem. From the very beginning, during the pandemic, we worked together and collaborated to do modeling and projections and forecasting around healthcare impacts of COVID-19. We also worked together to use our Healthy Places Index and look at disparities in vaccine allocation. And we actually were able to make prioritization and allocation of these scarce resources to address inequities. And it's been, again, an incredible partnership between academic uh, and academic healthcare with public health. I think one of the exciting things that happened in the course of the pandemic was that people who usually don't talk to each other talk to each other about everything. And it was a way for us to get through things. It was a way for us to build infrastructure and support each other and kind of feel like this sense of collective action. And part of what CPR3 does is continue that. It's a place, a, sh a space where people can get together in a trusted sort of way and share information, be a knowledge broker. This unique partnership with academic researchers and our public health department and other parts of our Health and Human Services Agency really helps us be informed by academic research that is happening on the ground and in the community, seeing what practically happens and evaluating it, studying it, and it really helps inform those our policies, especially if we have scarce resources and we need to prioritize our interventions. In order to operationalize all of this and really tap into the 10 campus University of California system, um, applying it as a think tank in a way for multidisciplinary policy relevant research, we've implemented a grant making program that to date has invested over six and a half million dollars in pandemic recovery and response in California. So specifically, those grants have focused on five priority research areas, including mental and behavioral health, social economic well-being, child and adolescent health, public health communication, and modeling with advanced analytics. I got involved with CPR3 uh, when the call went out for grants looking for ways to support California students after the pandemic. I had already been working in a collaboration with the local district on how we can make math intervention more joyful, more agentic, and sort of support students as whole learners in the classroom. I really enjoyed being part and learning about projects um, that, that are about the whole child, the recovery of the whole child, of our, of our families, of our systems in California. So I'm learning about um, healthcare and students' recovery, families and students' recovery, and um, it helps me see education as part of this whole process and understand that we're trying to support children um, to, to recover from the, the problems of the pandemic in a way that supports them as whole human beings. What's exciting about the work that we're doing at a policy level in the state is we are doing more to support our kids and we're doing different. So we've got new programs and new resources that are hitting the communities now and the question I think we need to address is, are they making a difference? Are the lives of our children measurably better as a result of some of these policies and programs? And that's a question that's hard to answer, right? There's a social context, there's an economic context that impacts our well-being and impacts our kids. But our academics, this public university system that I think is the best researchers in the world, I think they're best positioned to address this question and to look into the nuances in community A and community B and really tease apart what, if anything, is making a difference in the lives of our kids. Now that the 31 projects have wrapped up, our focus, which at its core is really about strengthening partnerships, is shifting to a knowledge broker model to translate that evidence that has been generated into real action. So a few examples include important work being done at UC Merced related to COVID vaccine messaging, and they're reaching out to Latinos in the Central Valley for that work. At UC San Diego, they're addressing caregiver burnout with a focus on the areas that really need it the most. 
I think going forward, I see so much opportunity for all of us who've been involved in CPR3, but all of us in public health more broadly, um, to be able to keep working together to solve problems. And hopefully CPR3 can be part of that solution. Um, what I like is to just continue convening with public health policymakers, community members, and other researchers who I constantly learn from to be able to address really important pressing public health challenges. I mean, we're facing things like climate change and the impacts on health and public health. We're facing maternal and child mortality increasing in, in our communities. We're facing things related to behavioral health that we've never experienced before in this brave new world. And what we've learned is that we need to work together and be honest and um, supportive 